Wedding Nerdigans. This is the one and only Packer Girl 89. Today's anime Nerdigan live reaction video is going to be for Sewayaki Kitsune no Senko-san, aka the Helpful Fox Senko-san, Season 1, Episode 2, titled Don't Be Shy Now. So, um, the chapter we are starting off with adaptation-wise is Chapter 2's adaptation of the manga. So without further ado, let's get to it. Okay, so Doga replaced the alarm clock with the, the smartphone alarm. Okay, I'm good with that. Giving us a modern nice detail. I kind of, I kind of wish Doga would have done something similar to uh, what we saw last week in regards to utilizing the animation a little bit more. Like, show us how freaking exhausted he is with the um, he, uh, but he, I mean Nakano. Show how freaking tired Nakano is with the background or like with the more of the expression on his face because even in the manga you see it um with the uh, uh the background um it's kind of driving me nuts that it's not like we don't have that but i will say this and we did see it last week um as well and i really got to give props to doga for this is that um because the pacing in the manga is really really fast i really like the um the extra content that we're getting in this anime because it really slows down the pacing and that is something that this manga definitely needed it really needed um, a slower pace and this is really really nice to see um uh, it's just that i really wish the in uh, it's just driving me nuts because i really wish they were doing a little bit more um visual visually with the art it's uh, the soundtrack is really nice. It's just art wise. I kind of wish they were doing a little bit more. <laughs> I love the banter, extra banter. I love seeing Nakano uh, stub his toe and knocking down the trash bin. Like this is great. And we're and the best part about this. And again, similar to last week, we're still getting the content that's in the manga and what Doga is doing. And I think we're going to get this with Donbaru. And it really gets me excited for Donbaru, to be honest, because Donbaru, in a way, is kind of similar to um, to Seko-san uh, um, structure, writing structure wise, uh, is that. Uh, Doga is just expanding the lore of what we're given, and it's really, really cool. Ah, I see why. I see why you... Uh, I see why you waited, Doga, because at the two-minute, three-second mark, we get the, you know, the black um, aura back here. But I still stand by my statement that, like, I wish we would have had, like, a purple like a bluish or purple background or something actually i think like a blue background would have been better uh than purple like to sign like a light blue to not too light but like light medium blue to uh, like symbolize exhaustion that kind of thing and then like have the bl like when you see the black mist showing up it would have contrasted so nicely i know i'm nitpicking but uh it just would have been really really cool to see again like I'm liking, like, even after Nakano leaves and after, um, and this is, like, after Senko says that she's got to, she knows what she's going to do to help, you know, get Nakano to sleep, we get even more content. We're seeing, like, we have Nakano, um, we're seeing Nakano walk, and, well, Senko's seeing Nakano walk uh, as, you know, Senko's doing, um, one of the chores, you know, beating, uh, the blank, beating slash cleaning the blanket. And, um, and we're seeing this black mist around him. And I just, I love how this symbolizes like the gloominess and the darkness. It just is so freaking cool. But God damn, as much as, as cool as it is, Doga, I, you gotta do something more with it. Because otherwise it's gonna be very repetitive, at least for me. It's gonna get boring. I need something more with this. And like right before the opening song, I really like that, that like it's not with, they could have what Doga could have actually done is start the um or ha, oh my god my wordings have the opening song um start right as uh, Senko-san um right after Senko-san said that she's gonna pa pamper a Nakano to um, his heart's content but instead they waited until uh, Senko was on or Nakano um was on the subway you know worrying you know saying his lines worrying about her but the only thing I got a problem with in regards to that, you know, when Nakano's on the, uh, on the train is he had this black aura around him still. 
why wasn't it there on the train? That should have been, like, consistently there. Like, yeah, you could see it. I think, it, if anything, wouldn't it have grown because he's worried about Senko? I, I, it's just kind of bugging me a little a little bit. I, I know it's uh, I'm nitpicking, but just, like, little things like that kind of throw me off. So even after the opening, like, Doga continues to give us some really, really good filler. Like, I really like this. We're seeing um, Senko, it's not just going, again, because the problem with the manga is, is that it's very, very fast paced. Um, Doga's slowing down the pacing, and we're actually seeing the act, um, what Senko does during the day. And it's really kind of... It, I really like that Doga is doing this, similar to what um, we saw last week when we actually saw how um, it turns out that N uh, Nakano and Senko met each other many years ago. I, I, like little things like this is just um, is really a nice touch, especially for a manga like this where it really, really needs to be expanded upon. And by exp I mean content-wise, it needs to be expanded upon. Excuse me. We even see Senko observing um, Nakano from uh, the spirit world. That's freaking awesome. I really, I gotta say this, I really love the soundtrack for while well, um, Senko's cleaning. It's just so calm and peaceful. It's just, it, and, and happy. It's really, really nice. And yes, the animation is, is really, really pretty too, but I just, oh God, it just, the soundtrack really takes it to like a whole nother level for me. We even see the, the, the offerings, um, the tofu offerings at like the 6 minute 15, 16 second mark. And then the 16 minute, or I said 16, I meant the six minute. Oh my God, my wording's right now. The six minute 15 second mark, you know, she, we see the offerings um, that she's going to use to cook. And then the six minute 17 second mark, she said he used to, meaning Nakano, used to like it after all. This is why I love this anime, manga to anime adaptation so much. And oh God, this is really getting me excited for Donbaru. It really is. If you are not excited for um for the Donbaru manga to anime adaptation that's Doga uh, that Doga is doing uh this summer, you you gotta be now. You need to be because this is really really good. Oh, even at like the six minute thirty seven second mark. Because, again, we didn't see this in the manga. Like, in the manga, it just went um, went from, uh, as I said earlier, it went from Senko-san uh, Senko basically saying she's going to, uh, um, oh, wait, where is it? Let me just have this in front of me for a sec. Where uh, Senko, uh, you know, realizes what she's going to do. She says, of course, and this is after, you know, she, um, she and she starts to, uh, um, Oh my God, beat the futon, you know, get the futon all cleaned up. And then it just goes to, um, then we get the title page of, you know, the chapter. And then it goes to, um, uh, freaking Nakano, you know, coming back from work, uh, at the six minute, like 37, 38 second mark, we're actually seeing, you know, Nakano at work. This is really nice. I really am like, again, I really got to give props to what Doga is doing with the writing. It's really, really nice. And again, we see the black mist behind um, uh, Nakano at like the six minute 47 second mark. And this is why I'm kind of, I'm glad we get to see uh, um, Nakano at work is because we get to see how that stress is built up. And I'm hoping like as, the, you know, this episode goes on and the stress is building up that we're going to see it like grow um, and like up until, you know, he gets home and sees Senko. I, I'm really hoping that Doga is going to do this, but we'll have to wait and see. At about the seven minute, like three second, yeah, seven minute, three second mark is when we get back to the actual manga canon um, and we're back to really adapting chapter uh, two of the manga. And again, like what um, we see when um, this is after Nakano gets home, um, it, instead of like it going to Senko just saying, okay, sleep, like it does in the manga, we're seeing everything. We're seeing him eating dinner. We're seeing um, him taking a bath and seeing him really relax. And we also get to see, you know, how Senko spots that aura over his shoulder. The only thing is, and it's really kind of bugging me, is because it really looked like what Doga was doing was it they were building up this stress that um, that uh, Nakano was, um, was getting um, at work. 
and I don't understand why there wasn't more. Why was there? Why wasn't there more? I just am confused by this. I mean, by like the time you know when we see him on the subway coming back, why wasn't there like? Why wasn't he like practically surrounded by this dark energy or you know the dark aura? I just don't understand. I'm kind of confused. You see this at like the eight minute thirty two thirty three second mark, and this is when Nakano's getting you know chewed out at work. I need more of of this utilization of the anime of you know the art the art um th consist or a little bit more consistency anyway but i mean i need i need a little bit more of this art utilized like not exactly like this but you know what i mean some divert what i mean is oh my god my fucking wordings right now i need a little bit more diversity going on with the art um it, it would have been nice to like have like this kind of uh if you're gonna have this uh I kind of wish it would have been red around the boss, but I'll take the blue. It look it looks really cool, but I like that we have the sim like the lines in the back of Nakano um, uh, for you know the stress and all that. It, it's really nice, um, but yeah, I, I yeah. Let's keep going. Oh my god, I got to amend my statement now because I just realized that light blue because this is all you know. This is Nakano's point of view. It definitely it's just uh, the light blue is symbolizing the center of. Uh, Nakano stress and then you have the like the uh, dark blue like framing it and which is actually pretty smart uh, Doga. I like that. Ooh, this is interesting at like the 8 minute 45 like 46 uh, 46 47 second mark when this is when Nakano is trying to get the cotton swabs and it keeps moving like what the hell? Oh, Senko was Senko was moving the cotton swabs so she could clean clean out his ears. That was cute. I like that she kind of teased it with the cotton swabs. That was cute. So I just realized this. Actually, the bath scene at the 7 minute 44 second mark is actually the uh, beginning of chapter uh, 5's uh, adaptation of the manga. Like, I knew something was familiar about like the ear cleaning scene. I was like, wait a minute, this ain't filler. And then I... I I found it where it was. So I'm really, really sorry, you guys. But yeah, it's the 7 minute 44 second mark is definitely the start of chapter 5's adaptation of the manga. But I will say this in regards to placement wise, I, it actually works for me. Because again, the um, as I've been saying when it comes to the writing of uh, this episode, it's actually flowing really nicely. And uh, again, the filler that we saw earlier with um, Nakano getting yelled at by his, bo uh, his boss, it really sets up Chapter five's adaptation really nicely as well. Um, so this this uh, what again what Doga is doing really is working for me writing wise. Ooh, at the nine minute six second mark when we we're seeing you know Senko cleaning um, the Lord's ears, it look I really like the art for it. It's really pretty. Oh man, you skipped a little bit of dialogue here. You've already slept on my. Um, it says uh, having my. Uh, it's embarrassing having my ears cleaned. And what Senko says. Um, after that is, uh, too late for that. You've already slept on my lap before, have you not? That's true. I was in so into it. Why would you skip that? Like, I don't understand, especially since we had, um, we saw that last week. This would have been the perfect time to have it. Why would you skip that? Ooh, I like what, um, Joka did here at the 10 minute, 10 second mark when, uh, and the con was like thinking, I feel like I'm wading into, uh, uh, to Criminal Waters. I love that they darkened it, um, darkened the frame. I like the shadowing that's, uh, from, like, the, the, um, the note, like, the, the eyes up, basically. It looks really, really cool. Okay, Doga, I gotta give you shit on the animation here at the 10 minute, um, 39 second mark, and this is when we're, uh, start, when you really see Senko starting to clean Nakano's ear. There, there's a lot of line work and detailing missing for Nakano's ear, and it's like, dude, I understand if the shot is zoomed out, uh, you could get away with uh, doing this. But especially in the manga, when there's all this detailing for the e Nakano's ear in the close-up shot, why would you not have that? I just don't understand. The 11 minute 23 second mark is just gorgeous. Oh my god, the lighting, the color scheme, oh, it is just beautiful. And hell, even a little bit before that when we had the uh, daisies popping up and blooming, oh, it looks so pretty. I really love it. And I, again, 
I'm not a fan of new age music usually, but like in this situation, it was definitely called for and it works so well. You could feel like, like I just, <laughs> just listening to this music while I'm watching this is just making me feel really relaxed. I don't know if anyone else is feeling relaxed or not, but God damn it, I'm feeling extremely relaxed right now. I love the sound of Senko's humming because we like, that's one thing I love about manga and anime adaptations that we could actually hear how the character sounds when they're humming or singing or whatnot it's really nice all oh, this transition into like the dream sequence at the 11 minute um 55 56 second mark is just beautiful oh my god and then at the when we get to the start of the dream sequence at the 11 minute 57 second mark the art style is just gorgeous it's it's like just about exactly what we saw last week. It is just beautiful. And this is why we got the flashback last week. This is why we got it. <laughs> I love it, Doga. I love, love how you did this. Oh God, this is just so freaking brilliant how Doga set this up. I Doga, you sneaky ass motherfuckers. This is so brilliant. And I love something else that I really like in that we're getting consistency. And this is what Studio Periot was definitely missing in Black Clover with Kirsch. And it just been pissing me off is that there, we've been getting a lot of scenes where Senko is sparkling. And that is, oh, it's awesome. And I love it. Dang it, Doga, why? Like, Doga, there's this, like, right before Nakano touches um, Senko-san's uh, ears, there's this close-up. And he goes now, and it's like kind of creepy in a way. And I don't understand why we didn't have that. Damn it, Doga, you've been doing so well. Like, oh, it's definitely the appropriate time to have sparkles going on. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes. Oh my God, when he touched Senko's inner ear. Oh my God, this is exactly what I wanted and more. Like Senko, I love that we got to see Senko's like face, and I love the different color palettes we had for the reaction. Uh, for um, Nakano's reaction as well. Um, it was so freaking cool. I love it. I love it. And um, Senko's uh, voice when she's like, when she says Eep, it's just so freaking perfect. And then at the 14 minute 38 second mark, when we see the actual, um, you know, the lightning like go into the sky, it actually is a lot bigger than what we have in the manga, which is really unusual because usually um, it's, it ends up being smaller, so that's kind of, that's really cool, actually. Oh my god, we're seeing her now? Oh my freaking god! So at the 15 minute 14 second mark, we jump back to uh, where we left off in Chapter 2's adaptation of the manga, and you know what? I gotta say, this is a very nice, smooth transition. It doesn't feel like, with One Punch Man um, Season 2 Episode 1, um, we had this issue where or we had, um, oh my god, let me reword this. In One Punch Man Season 2, Episode 1, JC staff uh, jump back and forth between chapters. Um, and what they, <laughs> because they did that, because they didn't finish scenes when they, you know, they were jumping back and forth, it made the episode feel really disjointed, especially writing-wise. Here, what Doga did was um, they jumped to Chapter 5, and actually, how they then when they transitioned to chapter five, it actually was a smooth transition, and how they even set it up perfectly um, earlier in the episode. And now, how they're transitioning it to uh, back to where we left off in chapter two's adaptation is so smooth and so perfect. Um, via, you know, via the dialogue, that yeah, it, it's a little bit Senko's a little bit different um, because Senko is more, you know, she's not as pissed off right now in chapter two but it's okay it works for this scene because it transitions perfectly back to chapter two's adaptation senko's supposed to save 12 hours i'm hoping that this is a uh a translation error she's because she's supposed to save 12 hours not eight god the 15 minute 34 second mark is so perfect the facial expression the background yes this is so perfect if possible i'd wish you'd sleep for nine hours was skipped the six, okay, I gotta talk about the 16 minute, eight, nine second mark when we're seeing, seeing the demon seep, or I should say, the, the it, it looks like another kitsune, but yes, it's seeping for 
uh, for 300, another 300 years. First of all, it is adorable as freaking hell. But the other reason I got to talk about it a little bit is because something that I noticed that Doga did here, and, and to an extent you notice it with uh, um, Senko as well, is if you pay attention and really look at look at it, look how much detail is in that fur. It it, it actually looks like fur. It, there's so much texture in it. It's really, really nice to see because something that's been a huge problem in a lot of um, manga to anime adaptations that I've seen is that, and fuck it, you could just say anime in general, is that a lot of, animator, a lot of um, animators aren't putting enough texture and detailing um, in uh, an animal animation. So, and also you could say hair animation, hair, fur, feathers, and whatnot, even to sometimes David Productions didn't do it in Captain Tsubasa 2018, to an extent that it didn't look like the animal at all, it looked like a sticker, it just didn't, it just looked really, really bad. Fuck, a good example is uh, um, in uh, Black Clover, when Studio Perry Eye attempted to uh, animate like the fire lions, for example. Um, they did not look like lions, at all and because they didn't have like the detailing like the uh, texture of the fire uh, that they're supposed to have <laughs> because they're fire lions it, it lo didn't even look like it it looked like a orange um it looked like an orange cat it didn't look uh, or maybe like almost a tiger it didn't look like a fierce ass lion uh, because of the lack of um detailing and texture but this right here it's i'm sorry i'm going into a little bit of uh I'm talking to a little bit too much about this, but it's just, I'm so happy that there's studios that are actually giving us texture like this, besides David Productions, of course, um, because we don't see enough of that. It's really, it's just really nice to see it. The 16 minute, like 52, 53 second mark when Nakano's laying on this futon and you see like, it's like heaven. It looks really gorgeous. The lighting is nice. The background is nice. It looks, and we get, you know, we have like the extra sparkle going on, but it's supposed to be heavenly and it looks heavenly. It's really, really nice, Doga. My God, this soundtrack just keeps getting better and better. It like, it's flowing so perfectly. Like when Nakato's like kind of, you know, slowly freaking out um, because, you know, he's uh, first when he's realizes that, um, that you know Senko's a god and she's sleeping on the floor he's like oh shit he's a god sleeping on the floor this is bad luck this is all bad and like you get these minor keys going on in this flute and then um when Senko comes into bed with him he's like oh shit this there's a small child in bed with me Th this is not good I don't think I'll be able to sleep and you get these like really sneaky uh the sneaky music going on and it it's just i really love it i really love how this soundtrack has been flowing it's it's really really nice and also that i gotta i want to mention the kitsune um fire it looks really really good um animation wise it looks gorgeous and you know when he's getting then the next morning like you know we have this sweet like violin music like it's just this soundtrack is just so good. It it's like it's like the complete op yes it it flows really well and it, but it's the complete opposite of uh, um uh oh my god Diamond Noise Act Two where it's just bass as fuck it's like nonstop bassery in Diamond Noise Act Two soundtrack wise but here it's like it's calm and like it has this mo but at the right moments it has like the uh, it's tense at the right moments but it's like peacefully tense if that makes sense it's. Uh, it's just awesome. I love it. We got more Koenji! Oh my god, I gotta say, this shot of Koenji looks at the 21 minute 10 second mark looks really, really good. And, but I gotta say, Doga, I love the little shots of Koenji. Like, even though one of um, the sh uh, the part where chapter, when chapter 5 was being adapted, and this was after Senko uh, let out that, um, that lightning, uh, Koenji was supposed to be there. So yeah. But like, even before that, when um, we saw... Uh, Senko laying out the futon. I think Ko Koenji was supposed to be there too, but let me double check real quick. Oh yeah, Koenji was, I'm sorry. I gotta make a correct, amend myself here. <laughs> Koenji was uh, supposed to be there at, you know, and at the beginning of the episode as well. So we saw Koenji at the right spot. So I, I understand why, again, this is understandable why Doga did, um, 
did this the way that they did or adapted the chapters that they did was to foreshadow uh Kawenji cuz Kawenji is coming next week and I can't wait. So um okay, let me talk about uh this episode overall and what how I think shit's going to be. So writing wise this episode was really really good as usual. I like the writing that we got. I kind of am disappointed that um, we didn't get the stuff of, uh, the little bit of comedy of, a uh, 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 little smart assery of, um, Senko saying to, um, Nakano, look, dude, you slept on my lap before. Why are you being all embarrassed and shit? Like, I, I, I wish that would have been there. Um, but, uh, I do like the extra content that we got writing wise. It definitely set up a lot of the scenes, uh, for, you know, chapter two and chapter five's adaptation. So it worked really well. And also like, the transitions that we got between chapter two and chapter five's adaptation in regards to in terms of flow, it flowed very, very beautiful, beautifully. We didn't, it didn't feel disjointed at all. It was very nice. Um, animation wise, like, I feel like, um, we're in like a, uh, well, I'm going to relate it to this, uh, season. Um, uh, yeah, this, uh, this season, anime season, I feel like this is kind of like Kono Oto Tamer um, episode two a little bit, where, like, the first half was kind of, like, meh, but the second half of the episode was, like, gorgeous, and this happens a lot with a lot of, um, manga to anime adaptations that I noticed, I I've noticed that, um, where, like, all the, like, really cool and creative stuff is, like, in, in, in the second half of the episode, and, uh, like, I hate when that happens, um, because, like, it's, like, damn it, you guys can be more consistent, and speaking of consistency, Something that bothered me, and it's probably bothered you guys, too, is where the fuck did the, the aura go? Like, last week we saw, you know, the aura disappear. Like, something I was hoping we would see, at least, you know, um, when, uh, at least, let me give it, when Nakano got back, was we'd see the buildup of, you know, the black aura surrounding him, and then as, you know, he was getting pampered uh, by... Uh, Senko, that, you know, it would slowly de decrease until it once again disappeared, similar to last week. Um, I'm kind of disappointed that we didn't get that. It just, like, it, it kind of feels like a plot hole going on with the animation in regards to that, and I hope that Doga kind of fixes that, because that's really kind of annoying. Um, actually, something I would love to see is if we see some aura around, um, uh, oh my god. Shit, totally forgot her name right now. Uh, Kawenji, if we see, like, some aura around Kawenji, because Kawenji, like, stressed the fuck out, too. So if we see some aura around here, that'd be nice. But, um, overall, like, the main problem I had with this episode animation-wise and, um, is the consistency with the black aura and just the consistency of the creativity with the, um, or not the creativity, that's wrong, with the utilization of the animation. Um, that, that's my main problem with that. The soundtrack... Uh, and also, oh, well, one other thing that bothered me, too, is that we didn't get, like, the extreme close-up and the creepiness factor of, well, like, right before um, uh, Nakano grabbed uh, uh, Senko's ears. But a lot of the reactions and stuff were goddamn perfect. There was a lot of beautiful moments animation-wise. I don't need to tell you. It was, there was a lot of gorgeous stuff. But I just wish it was more, like, spread out throughout the episode. Like, don't get me wrong. I loved a lot of the animation. It's just, I need more of it. And I need it... I just want more of it. It looks great. But the soundtrack, I really, what really made this episode, like, come to life for me, you know, besides the writing, is the soundtrack really brought it, really, uh, took it to, took this anime to the next level because it gave you that calming atmosphere that this manga needs. And again, especially with the writing, the pacing was just, it really, uh, um, help fix the pacing issues that the manga has, which was really nice. Um, and the soundtrack gave you this calming atmosphere, which is something that, you know, this manga calls for. And it gave you the, um, the tension, like right where it needed to be, where it needed it. And it was really goddamn nice. And I, I, I hope that we keep having this consistency in the soundtrack, um, as well, but I'm very curious, um, what you guys thought about this episode. I'm hoping what we're going to get um, adaptation wise is something similar to Kaguya. Um, I'm guessing, my guess it's going to be either two to three chapters per episode. That would be my best guess. Um, maybe even, yeah, I want to say two to three chapters, but let me know your thoughts in the comment section below and remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe to Nerdigans Inc. if you love what I'm doing and want to, uh, keep this channel alive since, um, 
uh, so I can bring you more uh, Sawayaki uh, Kitsune no Senka song content. There's a few ways you could do that. You could donate to my PayPal, Patreon, GoFundMe, purchase something off my Amazon wish list. All that's in the description box below. Um, also, make sure uh, you follow me on Twitter, Twitch, Facebook, from me on PlayStation Network. All that's in the description box below as well. Till next time, Nerdigans, I will be seeing you later. Bye.